But I went and got a junkyard motor. Yes, yes, you know the plight. Wah, wah, pops out of second gear. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that's interesting. When I talk about dogs, boom, boom, that's, that's going in the gear. Do you see that? Boom. What's up, people? We're back with the 1986 Kawasaki GPZ 900, which I'm building into a replica of the motorcycle from Top Gun. Uh, and also as a note, how much do we all hate the person that's, that beat up Bia's for build for building his Eleanor lookalike? So I guess this isn't the bike from Top Gun. I'm just restoring my Kawasaki, and I may or may not paint it that, in a way that makes me nostalgic. But anyway, today, so it's a part and it was running. What's going on with that and why is there a second engine here all apart? I'll tell you. Because if you're newly learning how to ride motorcycles and you think you're really cool because they are really fast and you're gonna start shifting really fast without the clutch, then you need to not suck because you're going to bend a shift fork and ruin it for somebody in the future or yourself. So. Bikes are plenty fast. Just use the clutch and be nice to your transmission. So as you can probably guess from this moment, this bike most likely has a bent shift port. Now I will admit that that makes me frustrated because the engine here that's all apart is the one that came out of this bike and it was making horrific and ugly noises uh, and is the reason why it is out and apart. But I went and got a junkyard motor, yes, yes, you know the plight, and put it in and it ran just fine. It was quiet and everything seemed all is well in the kingdom. Except when I went to ride it. After I got the fuel tank clean enough that it wouldn't die from fuel starvation in the filter, I was riding around, I'm like, this is an awesome bike, I love riding it, this is so cool, I'm gonna ride it home. And I was coming back to the shop, came around a corner, and decided to roll into it hard in second gear. Wah, wah, pops out of second gear. Put it back in, get on it, pops out of second gear. So in hopes, very much vainly, come on up and take a closer look, I thought, hey, maybe the, the lever here, this is where your foot shifts it, and that operates this shaft right here. Now I had the covers and such off, mind you, and this is where the drive sprocket is for the chain. Like all this stuff off, and there's the water pump and everything. Now when you shift gears, this little fork guy here moves up or it moves down, and it starts to rotate this wheel you can see. So I push it down, it's down shifting, and that appears to be that might not be first gear. Where is it? Hmm, that is very... Oh, somebody... Wait a minute. What's going on here? Something weird going on. Okay, so that's not first gear, but I can't quite get it in first gear. Let's see if I can turn this and make it do it. Here we go. Now we're getting there. Looks like Dan was shifting this to check it out. Okay, so that's first gear. And these detents here, there's one up here and there's one down here. And they put the bike into the gears you need. Now that is neutral. You can maybe see where it pops into neutral but it doesn't shift well going into second gear. Sometimes it'll do it, sometimes it won't. And um, if the shift fork is bent, it'll make it so it can't go in. So pretend my fingers here are a shift fork. You can come in close and take a look. So pretend this is the shift fork. It's important that when it slides a gear over to one side or the other, it goes all the way. So that the dog engagement, which is kind of like the ends of my finger, when it goes to slide over, it can go all the way in. If your shift fork is bent like this, one, it can bind and not really shift in place really well, but two, if it can't go all the way going in, like it may, if this is first gear, it might boom, stick in first gear really well, but it might not stick it in the second. So what'll happen is they won't engage real well and they should suck in, but if they don't, we put a lot of power on it, boom, pops out. So if you're lucky and you catch that quick and you didn't totally trash your gears and your dogs, you might be able to just replace the shifter fork or bend it back. So today, what I've done and arranged is I'm gonna do an experiment. Now, for all you Kawasaki guys that have really built a lot of these motors, bear with me, I have not. I work on general things and I'm having fun with my first Kawasaki here. But for all of you guys, this is the old motor, identical to that one, and if you look carefully, you can see a couple of things. Now, generally speaking, well, not generally speaking, if you have to replace actual gears or get to the crankshaft or pull that off, you have to do what's called splitting the cases. And right here, there's a seam. And that seam is also where the bearings are that hold all the bearings to the crankshaft. So this seam right here is the center line of the crankshaft and also allows you to split it all in half to get to all the gears and you can remove all that. You also have to take this off and basically it's about the biggest job you can have with 
your engine is splitting the cases without a full tear down and rebuild. But today I'm going to see with my fingers crossed if maybe I can be lucky enough just to remove the pan part, which is this upper part, in hopes that if, if I can remove, remove this and maybe I can remove this shifter barrel, and that's the barrel that rotates that allows you to pick your gears. If I can take the detent out of that and pull it out, I might be able to get the shifter forks out without removing the gears. Now, if that's the case, then that means I can theoretically fix this bike by getting a new fork in it without removing the engine and doing all that stuff and splitting the cases, which I really don't want to do. <laughs> I just want to get it back on the road to enjoy it. So let's have a little fun today and take this oil pan area off and just see. And even if I won't be able to go that direction, it should at least be very interesting to see what's going on inside of this Kawasaki motor. And uh, maybe I'll get lucky and be able to fix it that way. Either way, I will be fixing the bike in a later episode. Today, we're just gonna open this up and take a look and see, will I be lucky or will I be unlucky? <laughs> this bike has made me unlucky so far. And this is a really, really good example on this Kawasaki of why you are always better off to buy a vehicle that's already running like you already know about what you got uh, versus buying it otherwise because you at best you're going to be off you're going to end up just fine but if you buy something that's not running one there's probably a reason why it was not running um, and the only one that's acceptable is they just stopped using it <laughs> so keep that in mind because this motorcycle i'm now in it to it for a lot more money and most especially time that I didn't want to put into it. If I would have just waited, frankly, I could have bought one that's already running and driving for potentially half the money of what I have in this and a lot less time. Now that would be kind of boring because then I don't get to show you guys and have the fun of the YouTube channel and the builds. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still a guy like everybody else. Okay. You want to come in close and take a look? Sure. Just popping them loose. All right, you guys, I've got all these bolts loose. I'm kind of just pulling them out willy nilly. Uh, but since some are longer than others, it's potentially a good idea to take a piece of cardboard, sort of draw where they went, and then that way you know exactly. Um, I'm being cocky and just taking them out because I'm pretty good at figuring out where they go. But uh, don't be like me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see if it'll pop off. Okay, come on. You're gonna be nice. Ooh, look at that. Satisfying. Oh, 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 come on. Be something great to look at. Oh, that is more complex than I was expecting, admittedly. All right, that's cool. So I guess that's the, ooh. Ooh, ooh, there were crunchy things that went down in there. Ooh, maybe that's why this motorcycle was making such bad noises. Oh, I gotta find that out. <clears throat> oh yeah, what's this? <laughs> wow. Oh man. No wonder it sounded like a, a bunch of ball bearings in a blender. Yeah, that's not good. I wonder what they what happened. It might be a thrust bearing or something. I don't know. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That's why it was so horrific. This is the uh, balance shaft. You know what, maybe this engine's not in such bad shape. Huh. Wow, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. Okay, so that's what happened to that engine. Okay, there's the pickup screen for the oil pump. That's cool. 10 millimeter, what do you know? That's such an uncommon size. Ooh, that's in there. I seem to recall everything on my Yamaha being 10 millimeter. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of chunks here. Man, there's a bunch of chunks. Oh, there's a bearing. Oh, that's terrible. 
That was torqued a lot higher than I kind of thought it was going to be. Okay, well this is at least fun to see. I say it's fun to see right now because I don't have that much riding on this engine. <laughs> if I was more worried about it, I'd be like, oh man. I should probably get a bigger wrench out. Okay, got these bolts out. They were in there pretty good. Looks like they had some Loctite. All right. I wonder if that'll come out easy. Now I'm being gentle. Hmm. Is there a bolt in here holding it? Oh, it seems there is. Hiding under the oil. Look at that. Yes. It's in the darkness. Yep, there's that. Okay. So hopefully now it's this. Seems like it. Oh, looks like I can pull it out. Okay. Ooh, that is a big old thing. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, so there's the oil pump right here. And apparently it drives through this way and the shaft goes all the way through because that's what's going to drive the water pump also. So that's kind of neat. Oh yeah, Dan, I think, I'm pretty darn sure I can take the shift fork out of this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, without getting the gears. Hopefully the gears are still okay though, right? Yep. Take a look. What do you think? Cool, yeah. It should just slide out. You have all the forks out already? Or, oh no. No, by the way, this is Dan. Hey guys. Dan's one of the Genius Garage students this year. You've seen with a like and build, but he's also a bike guy. So you've been kind of... Uh, In there a bit. Yeah, helping me out yeah. and thinking and... Good to bounce ideas off somebody else. And I'm trying to keep him from making a terrible decision and buying a rusty Ford Anglia with no engine. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, you think this will come out easy? Yeah, it should. It looks like it. This is really nice and open here. I imagine it would slide out. Okay, so if you guys want to see right here, here is the shift drum, okay? And then when I turn it like this, see how it's trying to shift these gears to the side right here? Oh, I need to be stronger than that right now. Come on, baby. Get your butt over there. See that right there? And there's... Nice, okay. There's one gear. There's another gear. There's another gear. And that's how it shifts. See how it moves them all around like that? That is darn interesting, isn't it, Dan? I'm trying to decide which one's second gear. Okay, we're, this, is, this is the output, right? Yeah. So then presumably... In uh, neutral, there's like a notch that lines up up here. Yeah. Um, it's kind of circular. I think this must be first gear. Yeah. Well, that's weird because I figured that would be second, but I'm starting to think that that's second gear way over here. Hmm. Oh, that is much different than I thought. Okay, so if that's first gear, Trying to get this thing to stop being dumb. Okay, that's neutral. Uh, you took out those detents, and I don't know what gear it's in. Yep, so. I guess I'll just go all the way to one end. That is five. So sixth gear is here. Fifth gear is here, if you can see that. And then fourth gear is this one, which is right next to it, which is fascinating. And that's third gear. Meaning second gear is way second gear is on the other side of the box from first. It's way over here, Dan. It's a totally different shifter fork than yeah. first. Which means when you get to? Yeah, six, five, four. Four and second use the same shifter fork. Okay. So I wonder if this thing shifts weird going into fourth gear. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because that's second gear and that's fourth gear. So if it goes into fourth gear really easily, then that would tell me that this one is bent. Okay, that's interesting. All right, you guys, I hope that made sense. Uh, it's interesting how the gears are spaced and how they do that. I, for whatever reason, not knowing the diagram and not seeing it before, just figured the shift fork would be the same, bouncing back between first to neutral to second. Turns out it's not that way, it's spaced. So it's first gear, comes over to neutral, they're all in neutral, and then this one pops over for second. So what I'm gonna do right now is wipe off my hands. I should have put gloves on, but I didn't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the shift barrel here. I'm going to get a Phillips screwdriver because there's a Phillips screw in it that'll allow me to turn it. And I'm just going to kind of feel if it's weird going into fourth gear. 
because if the shifter four is bent away from second gear, then it should be bent towards going in this. Um, okay, so if you downshift, that goes down. Okay, so that's full downshift is neutral. Okay, here comes second gear. If I can get it, there's second gear. Here comes third gear. Here's going into fourth gear. It doesn't feel weird or bad. I can't really tell. You probably, I guess you're not gonna notice it, how it is going into that gear. But uh, can you see what's going on in here well enough, Peyton? So this guy is neutral, so now it's a neutral. Boom, that's first gear. Boom, and the second gear is right over. Let's see, it has a hard time even going into second gear. Okay, so. There's that. So here's going to be the plan for the next video, you guys, and I'm glad to see this. Um, going to open this up, obviously going to look closely into it, and I'm going to inspect the dogs. The dogs being the side. So when I speak of the dogs, if you guys look down in here, you see this thing right here that's rotating on the side, those big blocks? Those are the dogs. If you look right here, between those gears, let me, let me find the gears where they stick them in there. Hold on one moment. Oh goodness, get in the gear, darn it. I am having such a difficult time now. Shift, darn it, shift, I say. Oh my God, I suck at life right now. Okay, now that was first gear. Here comes second, if I can find it. There's second, third, fourth, ah, oh, here we go, okay. So you see this right here, you guys? These two gears are moving over like that. When I talk about dogs, boom, boom, that's, that's going into gear, do you see that? Boom. Then boom, see how it bangs over like that? That's when something goes into gear, just like that. And I can even shift it over to this gear. Click right over there. But that's going into gear right there like that. That's how it works. And you can see that the dogs don't fully go into place, okay? Even when I bring this one over, it only comes in up kind of about halfway. So if your shifter fork's bent and it's too close, it'll pop loose and it'll bend the fork even more and it'll round off your dog. So we, I gotta make sure that that's not gonna do that. Anyway, I just want to show you guys that. I'm going to shift it back down, find that second gear. So yeah, anyway, that's what we're going to do next time, guys. I'm going to remove the shift. I'm going to remove all this stuff from the bike with it on the ground. I might have to get the bike up in the air. I'm going to get this shift barrel out. Then I'll be able to remove the forks. I'm going to inspect them. I'm going to compare those forks to these forks. If this is really nice, I might just put this fork in that or I might try to straighten it out. But of course, I'm also going to have to take a close look at those dogs. Hopefully they're okay. I guess it wouldn't be too terrible to split the case, but that's still a heck of a lot of work. And honestly, I don't want to do it. I'd much rather replace the fork. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed today's video and naturally that you will subscribe, but please click that bell so I can continue to bring you wholesome and entertaining automotive content. Also a huge thanks to Avalon King Ceramic Coating. They're supporting this channel and making this all possible. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to using it on all of my vehicles, including my old dirt bike. Ceramic coating bonds directly to the surface of your paint, trim, and plastics to give a long-lasting shine that beats all waxes. It lasts for years and it's easy to maintain. I've got it on my Viper right now and my car has never looked this good. So give them a try. Again, thanks for watching and I look forward to see you next time.